Hello everyone. Welcome to today's session on grasp. Myself Sudeep Samanjay and today we have a star speaker on our platform, Nidhis Sagar. So Nidhis Sagar is Master of Science student in Indian Institute of Science who managed to crack the code and make it past the gates of Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the world number one for his PhD. In the following session, he is going to equip us with application strategies for prestigious international universities. So, hello Nitish, how are you doing? Hi Sudeep, I'm doing good. What about you? Uh, I'm doing fantastic. And today our viewers are waiting to learn some of the key strategies and important areas to focus before applying for uh, international institutions during the applications and in the process uh, of application. So can you speak about some of the key lookout strategies uh, for an impressive grad school application? OK, an impressive grad school application consists of a great research experience, which is displayed well, and uh, it's requires something out of the box. See, everyone writes an SOP, has a CV and everything, but you should have something out of the box. So what I did was I had a website, personal website for myself. So whenever I used to uh, write my SOP or anything, I used to put the link of the website so that if they want to know more about me, they can go to the website because SOPs are limited to two pages and UIUC especially limits it to one page. You know, so very limited what you can write about yourself. So I had a website and I think a lot of people, you know, viewed the website and, you know, got a uh, good impression about me because see having a website shows that you're presentable. So I, I found that to be a uh, X factor in my application. Apart from that, obviously uh, a well-crafted SOP, you know, is very important. I made sure that my SOP went through revisions of a lot of my seniors because uh, they're the ones who know a lot about uh, the application process. So everyone gave you know, very valuable suggestions and incorporated some of the best of them into my application. And uh, I, I told you, right, I uh, showed uh, my SOP to uh, professors as well and, you know, they uh, they told it was it's good it's well crafted it hits all the points and um, I, I showed it to us props not just our props so uh, it was good that way and uh, so sop also matters and obviously research experience matters a lot and knowing uh, having contacts in the place you're going to matters a lot for your application because hundreds of people apply to your the places in, in the us especially and um, you need to be handpicked if you want your application to be read well. So always associating yourself with people who have contacts is is something which can be a make or break for your application. So apart from all the general things like SOP, GRE, or TOEFL, or GPA, CV, everything, your um, contacts and everything matter a lot. Yeah. Well, uh, you it's really great to know that um, it's not just the game of just the research output, but also there's a really good game of networking which gets involved to take Absolutely. the best out of uh, the Absolutely. See, if there's one position open in a lab, and if there are two people applying, one guy has a very high GPA, but uh, nobody knows anything about him, but another person has a mediocre GPA, but the prof, his prof or her, her prof, knows the prof whom he's applying, he or she is applying to. So people want to recruit students whom they can trust. So even if you have a mediocre GPA, it doesn't matter. If the prof trusts you, he will take, he or she will take you. So um, networking is extremely important. You know, it's very undervalued, but it's extremely important. Well, we would really take that uh, quote from your end. And uh, can you speak uh, more on the role of recommendation and how should one start uh, going and choosing about their labs in very early stage of their career so that uh, they have a complying platform for a good uh, application for prestigious universities? Sure. Uh, yeah. So recommendation letters are again very, very important, as important as your research experience, because you could have done all the research, but then are there people who can uh, support your claim? Are there people who tell that, yeah, this guy, this person is worth their salt. So uh, I think re recommendation letters are very important. I think IIC professors in general, or if you say IITs or other professors who have 
experienced uh, this process of applying and have done their PhDs outside and everything. They know this process, so uh, it's good to be associated with such profs and get record letters from them. But um, coming to the other question about, you know, uh, how, uh, what was the other question? It was about your, uh, what you can do in your early stages of UG so that. Yes, yes, by uh, choosing the labs. Labs, yeah, it's extremely important because see, first year undergrad also you can do a lot of work because you know, in many things in research, it doesn't require prior knowledge because you just have to learn on the fly. So uh, even if you're a first year UG, you can join a lab and you know, you can, get a hands on experience and you know you can learn on the fly. So it's very essential that you choose labs that have a good alumni base because that shows that you know people are doing well and uh, after graduating from that. Second thing, obviously if you join a new lab where the prof is new, then you'll have to trust the prof and you know work with them. And uh, but it's, it's always good to go to labs which have good alumni. And um, second thing is uh, research area doesn't real like uh, conventional research areas like if if they're like say computation materials or you know experimental work like wet lab work or whatever it is those things really don't matter you should be able to adapt to any field that you choose like or if you join a lab particularly then you should be able to adapt to that lab okay because we are not born to do part any particular research area right we should we are human beings we are talented people we are smart we can learn whatever is given to us and we can do research so we should in undergrad especially you should be open to any research area don't just think i, I love astrophysics i'm just going to do that not that you know, be open to everything try to find good labs okay and try to learn their research area and try to choose labs which work on hot topics like you know quantum computation you know or machine learning because Unfortunately, the world is driven by, you know, fancy stuff. So um, money is there in places where, you know, in, in these kind of hot topics and especially in US, you know, grad student positions are funded by these, uh, you know, funded for these specific, specific topics like hot topics in India. Yeah, you get money from government so you can do any research work you want any, any topic, but in the US it's not like that. So it's very important that you associate yourself with hot topics so that you know you can be attractive uh, like a PhD student for multiple groups across the university. So you, there's a better chance of getting an admit. So yeah, that's about choosing labs here. Yeah. And obviously lab culture and all matters. So but across on your undergrad, you'll get to uh, you'll get an experience. So choose sometimes choose big labs, sometimes go for labs which are new, get an experience of all kinds of things so that you know where you what kind of lab you desire, what kind of lab dynamics you want for your PhD. So I was able to do that in my undergrad. Like in my sophomore year, I joined a very big lab, very famous professor. Then in my for my master's thesis, I joined a fresh prof, like a prof who just joined. So uh, I got a taste of both. And in my first year, I had done an industry related project. So you can see the kind of diversity I had in my undergrad. So you know that I use that as a strong point in my application that I've done, you know, uh, I've doubled in various areas and you know, I now I know what I want to do a PhD in. So uh, I will be more informed. So yeah, these kind of things really matter in your undergrad. Well, that's really great to know. And uh, Nidesh, coming to some of the key guidance points, can you speak about them? It can be the alumnus, it can be the seniors, and how one can take help uh, to apply for uh, prestigious international institutions. Yeah, seniors help a lot. So I remember when, as soon as I came to ISC, the first thing I did was contact seniors. So I used to always bug them with my doubts, like what to do. Since my first year, I used to ask them like how to get into good places and everything. Uh, they used to like tell me chill, it's okay. People will guide you when it comes. But then I was always curious and you know, I used to look at people's career paths, whether they're doing well in the PhD after leaving from here, what kind of decisions are wise, what I shouldn't repeat and those kind of things. So uh, seniors are very, very important because they have traversed the path that you are going to. So they can give the best advice. Uh, and if you go and talk to profs, right, they have a disconnect because there are minimum at least eight or nine years ahead of you. 
like in your career, even if they're fresh. So uh, things would have changed over this, over a decade or so. So their advice can be only limited to, you know, the uh, broad aspects, the finer aspects of say an application or uh, what are the fine points that can strengthen your application that only seniors can help you, only seniors. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, Indish, uh, thanks a lot for being a part of uh, the GRASP interviews and whatever you said are very insightful and we are very sure that our viewers have a lot to take from this. And to all the viewers, thank you for staying all through the talk. And uh, we are, uh, please like, share, and subscribe our channel to encourage us to make more such videos. And we will bring you the right quality and right content at your doorstep so that you can take quality decisions in the future. Thank you, Nidish. Thank you, everyone. We look forward to engage with you once again in the future. Thanks, Ali. Bye. Bye.